it going? So, this video is a part two in a two-part series that I'm making all about my job as a research technician at King's College London. Now, in case you missed part one, which was talking all about the application, how I found out about the job, how I applied, how the interview went, what the interview consisted of, in case you missed that, I will leave a link below to that so you can go and check it out and kind of get a bit more information if you're interested. But in this video, I want to talk about what the everyday role of my job is like, what kind of tasks I do on a day-to-day -day basis, what my week looks like, what are some of the projects I work on, because I know a bunch of you guys who watch these videos also want to do a similar thing and I kind of want to share with you as much as I can so that you guys can have a better understanding when you go out there and start looking for jobs. Okay, so I'm going to give a little bit of a brief summary that I already gave in the first one, but in case you missed that one, you probably missed what I said. And basically, as I said, the job is a research technician job. It is within St. John's Dermatology, but it is actually within the Division of Cancer. So a lot of the academic and also patient and biobanking work that we do is on cancer and with cancer patients. So let's just rewind a little bit to when I um, had my interview and got a place. Now, when I applied to the job, in the job description, it mentioned that the job requires a lot of routine experiments and to kind of build up a biobanking database and also build up samples that we collect from patients and, you know, keep up with those kind of things. But when I was in the interview itself, I told my supervisor, who my, well, my current supervisor now, um, that I'm really interested in the phase one clinical trial they're doing and I'm really interested in the more academic um, side of what their lab does and since I started the job she's been nothing but encouraging to kind of get me to get be in those areas and be a little bit more involved and have a bit more responsibility so I think that's great because I think it makes this video a little bit more rich because I can share with you even more little snippets from here and there Now one thing that I didn't mention, but you guys might already know this if you watch my videos, is that I did phlebotomy training last year. And if you don't know what that is, it's essentially getting trained to take blood. Good morning everyone! So, I'm vlogging today because today is the second part of my phlebotomy training. So we just finished the session and again we took blood from each other. Do you want to show yours? Okay, I would, I, would, I would show yours but mine is like under here. But Jack, are you ready? I'm ready. To be bled. Do you give consent for your I blood to be give used consent to in my me. research? Yes. Fantastic. That's the most important thing. Um, oh, and by the way, guys, if you do not like needles, then maybe fast forward this bit. But if you're interested, keep watching. Now, weirdly enough, this came in absolutely handy because what I didn't realise is that as part of my job, I would have to get a lot of blood and process it and then prepare it for experiments or freeze it and keep it in our biobanking facility. But what I didn't realise is that because I'm trained to take blood, it kind of makes things so much easier because it means I can approach patients and take blood from them. Or for example, if I'm in the lab and we need healthy volunteers, then I can very easily take blood from our colleagues to use as healthy volunteers instead of having to go down to the nurses and go down to actual phlebotomists in a hospital. So weirdly enough, that just worked out. Now when I actually started, everything was very overwhelming because I did not like realize how much training and how many kind of um, sessions and things like that you have to attend when you are dealing with this kind of like patient data, patient information and all of these GDPR stuff which is so important. So I remember I had training after training on learning how to consent patients, learning how to for example keep data safe and how to store samples correctly and appropriately and how to file all of this. So a lot of these things which are very important but can come as a bit of a shock because it was this wave of information that I had never had to kind of think about because when I was doing my masters even though I was in a lab and I was doing cancer research it was mostly on cell lines and it was mostly not involving any kind of patient information or patient data but having said that eight months into the job there are still 
training sessions that just come up and you just have to do them because you need to do them as for the next kind of thing that you're working on. And to be honest, I think that's a really good thing because it means you're constantly learning and you're constantly growing, but you really do go through the whole phase of being like really overwhelmed and then kind of like getting used to it and like being able to work and then suddenly getting overwhelmed again and you know, the cycle continues. Now I'm just going to break down parts of the role that I do into four parts and I think this is the best way that I can kind of systematically talk you through some of the, the things that I do on a weekly basis. And this is going to be kind of a little bit difficult because a lot of the things kind of like interlink and kind of like go with each other but I'm going to do my best guys. So let's start with MIST. Now MIST is a name of the study and I'm going to read out the full name to you because I can never remember off the top of my head. And it is Melanoma Immunomodulation and Immune Responses of the Skin Study, a Translational Science Research Protocol. So essentially this is a study in which we obtain samples from patients. And part of my role is involved in getting the blood, getting the tissue, getting skin biopsies, and either storing them away in our biobanking facility or preparing them so that members of the lab can use them in any of the experiments that, that they are doing. Specifically, there are two PhD students who are working on this quite heavily, so a lot of the things that I obtain and process is for them so that they can carry out their research. Now additionally, because I did all of my GDPR training and I am able to consent patients and also take blood, I do also attend the clinics themselves and on days where it is quite busy and we have kind of a high demand of the number of patients that we need, then I then roll up my sleeve and kind of join in with the clinical team and take blood from patients and consent them and talk to them and tell them about the study and that's one of my favourite parts because not only do I get to process the blood and do experiments with it, I also get to be involved in this first step which is finding, like identifying the right patients and consenting them and then taking blood from them and then taking the blood up to the lab and so I really do get to be involved in the whole translational axis. And obviously considering I'm somebody who really wants to go into medicine, the experience I get talking to patients and kind of seeing how the NHS is run and then seeing how research is done alongside the treatment that the patients receive is just incredible. Now there are two more things that fall into the MIST category, one of them being the gatekeeper of the database and essentially what that means is all of these patients that we consent, all of these samples that we take and process, they all need to be kept um, in a database and we need to keep a log of all the samples we have and how much of everything we have and at what time points we took them and you know information about the patient that is related to the sample so that is again part of my role to be involved in all of that and create this huge database and keep up to date and track everything that we do. Now this sounds a little bit dull but I'm the kind of person that I weirdly enjoy these kind of like repetitive tasks because I feel like it helps my mind like process things in the background while I'm doing something boring. So it's quite good for somebody of my demeanour but it is quite an important role because the last thing you want when you have hundreds and hundreds of samples is to not know where everything is or not know what like one label means or what patient it corresponds to so although I kind of joke and say that you know it's kind of like a bit of a boring task I think it is really important to keep on top of it. And the last thing is that although all of this MIST study is to do with melanoma patients and melanoma is an aggressive form of skin cancer, it's also very important for us to recruit healthy volunteers and at the moment me and a colleague of mine are working on an, in, an initiative, I can never say that, working on an initiative to try and recruit more healthy volunteers into our study because when you write up a paper you want to compare the data that you've got from your cancer patients with healthy volunteers and to try and draw some parallels that way. Now, the phase one clinical trial. Now, I find this 
so interesting and I think it's so cool that an antibody that was developed within the lab that I'm working in is now in a phase one clinical trial and is being tested out on patients. Like honestly I find this so cool. It's the kind of thing that like, you hear people from like Cancer Research UK and stuff talk about but like I get to see it and I get to meet the patients and it's, it's oh I don't know I just I'm geeking out a little bit. So the whole process for our clinical trial starts off with identifying patients who might be suitable. Now the treatment that we're developing is being given to patients with ovarian cancer. So on Wednesdays I attend a, no sorry, on Thursdays I attend a pre-clinical meeting where lots of the doctors sit and discuss the patients that they're going to be seeing on the day and they talk about you know things like a little bit of history a little bit about you know the patients and what the kind of things that they are going to be talking about on the day and this is where i kind of chime in now and again and say oh i think that patient might be suitable for our child or maybe do you think this patient could go ahead so i play a role in trying to identify the patients that could potentially be eligible for our trial and once those patients are identified, they will get screened and if they pass all of the eligibility criteria, then one of the doctors can make a referral to the clinical, the phase one cl clinical team and then the patient may be recruited onto our study. So as well as dealing with the identification and I guess recruitment of the patients onto the study or the phase one trial, my next bit of involvement in the whole trial bubble is to carry out experimental assays on the patient's blood before and during their course of treatment. Now I'm going to paraphrase a little bit because um, I feel like the video is quite long already um, but basically before the patients are given this type of drug a small amount of blood is taken from them and we do an assay and this assay is basically to make sure that the patient doesn't have a reaction to the drug that they're going to be given. And then we repeat this assay every time a patient is given a dose of the drug to just, just make sure that they aren't going to have any kind of reaction to it. And after doing all of that, you have to write the reports and send it off to Cancer Research UK and to the rest of the team. So that is also absolutely fascinating to be able to kind of see and observe and you know it's just very interesting now something i actually didn't say about the phase one clinical trial is that guys hospital is only one of four sites so while we are the ones who run this uh, clinical trial in our department there are also sites at cambridge the marsden and also ucl and we all kind of work together to recruit patients and dose them with this new drug and kind of carry out uh, the assays and follow them up and see what happens. Now the ovarian observational study is probably the most academic part of my role and although I still do all of the um, recruiting, identifying, consenting, um, taking blood, taking acidic fluid and also being involved in processing those samples I also work with a postdoc to carry out lots of experiments and um, obtain data and kind of do all of this work for an academic paper that she's working on that I am kind of helping her put together. Again, I absolutely love this because it is the translational access from literally the very beginning to the end where you have the paper. So it is identifying patients and consenting and getting the blood and doing the experiments and writing the paper. So. Again, I think that's just amazing. And finally, we have got the miscellaneous category in which there are things like going to conferences, helping my supervisor with a um, module that she put together for third year biomedical sciences students. And that was a lot of fun because I really wanted to go to these lectures and you know, kind of learn a little bit more about immunotherapy and the immune system. And my supervisor was very encouraging, which is great. And in return, I kind of helped her um, with I think one of one revision session and also help the just you know put the notes together and staple it and make sure that um if the guest speakers have any questions or queries that I would help around with those kind of things too. Oh and one more thing that I actually forgot to mention is that I also was involved in organizing a patient visit to the lab and I really hope to be able to do more of these things in the future. I think I might make a separate video about that because that entire day was super fun 
and we got to host one of our patients who wanted to come and have a look at the kind of work we do. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll make a future video about that. Whew. So, I feel like I have been talking forever, but that is a, a bit of a general overview of the kind of things I do in my role. And as you can see, although the title of my role is a research technician, I feel like I am involved in a lot of clinical sides as well as just the research things in the lab. And I think for somebody in my current situation who wants to go and do postgraduate medicine, it's absolutely perfect. And now, just to finish off, because I want to give you guys a little something to take away, um, if you want to try and find a role similar to this, just make sure to speak to the people who are offering the role to find out exactly what it consists of and try and see where their priorities lie in terms of are you going to be spending a lot of time in a lab, are you going to be spending a lot of time in a clinic, because if you are somebody who is a pure academic and you don't really want that much involvement in the clinical side, then I think it's very important for you guys to um, be aware before you start a role like this. I really hope that this gave you a bit of an oversight of a typical day or a typical week in my role. And as always, if you have any further questions about things that I didn't mention, then please do let me know in the comments below. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I wish you the best of luck if you are in the job application process because I know that it can be quite daunting. And I wish you the best of luck. All right, my lovelies. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe and press the little bell icon for future videos. Until next time, take care and I'll see you later.